What up, world? It's Festive Reverb, and welcome back to Patchwork. Today we have a very wonderful guest. Uh, this woman has seemingly done everything that there is to do with a synthesizer and with modular synthesis. She's performed for the Scholarly. She's ran this highly successful sound design business and done countless amount of advertisements. She has released albums, both electronically and acoustically and classically and she has basically made this grand return back to the thing that got her started which is her modular synthesizer i'm talking about nobody other than suzanne chiani suzanne welcome to patchwork thank you so much it's a, my total pleasure to be here speaking with you yay it is uh, an honor for us to have you you have seemingly been all around the world performing again with your Bukla modular synthesizer, kind of returning back to what really attracted you to electronic music in the first place. I guess it's just by grace of the fact that I've lived long enough to do a new cycle of, you know, uh, reconnecting with my, my early passion, which was the Bukla. I discovered your music when I got into modular synthesis and particularly the Bukla con concerts from 75. So is that what you're kind of taking back to the live scene, like some of those performances, or is this like a, an entirely new performance and just sonic landscape? Well, interestingly, there are strong connections to that period. And also there are disconnections from that period. The main difference right now is that I'm playing a 200E, which is the newer version of the 200. It has a digital component. The 200 to me was the apotheosis. You know, it was the most refined live performance modular instrument. And I still maintain that, but it doesn't exist really. Uh, my 200, half of it was stolen, half of it broke down. I couldn't revive it. When I came back to the Bukla five, six years ago, I thought, well, what, what did I do? I can't remember. And I had written a paper called Report to National Endowment. I had gotten a grant. And in satisfaction for the grant, I had to write a paper. I wrote a 40-page paper about how to play the bukla. And this served me very well because when I came back to, to playing the bukla, I consulted the paper. And I consulted it and I noticed, you know, that it gave me four sequences that were spelled out, the sequences that I used in those days. And so I adopted those. And then I adopted certain of the techniques and, you know, adapted them to the 200E. And so that was my starting point. I had to develop a new relationship with the 200E. And at first, I was really uh, stymied and upset. You know, it, it had issues. And a bukla was still alive when I first started this comeback. And I would meet with him and say, you know, Don, uh, this this module is not working. I can't do this. I can't tune. Wow. It won't hold a tuning for more than two octaves. And, you know, his attitude was, well, you know, do something else. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> and so what I, I did was I gradually found, navigated my way around these problems and solved a lot of them. I suffered tremendously with the tuning problems for about a year and then oh. I had something built. I had a little module built that allowed me to mix my voltages and get a linear output. Another thing was the filter. So the early filters, I mean, there are so many differences. The early filters, you could put a control voltage in negative or positive. So you sure. could, you know, affect, okay, sure. But the new, no, the new filter, you couldn't do that. It was all positive. Now I have a clone of the 200 filter. So, you know, it's been a process over the years as a performer on these instruments. The, the tools that you're using are going to define, you know, what you can do. But uh, if you know what you want, you, you, can, you can create it somehow, you know. Even now, my perspective on Don Buchla, it just goes up and up and up because 
I call in the Leonardo da Vinci of electronic modular music instrument design. He never used the word synthesizer, of course, so it's a mouthful to say what he did. But uh, for instance, if you look at uh, this keyboard, this is the 223E, uh, what is it called? The multi-dimensional kinesthetic input port. Buchla loved designing names. They were wonderful. <laughs> and it goes with a module here. There's a module here that allows you to program this. And of course, this is a job for digital. So the 200E has a digital component. And thank goodness, because there are, you know, a hundred specifications, you decide what each of these keys is going to do. It's like it becomes a control center. Mm -hmm. And once you program it, which can be a little painstaking, um, it's there. So you don't have to, to worry. So all those specifications just pop up. I want to kind of jump into what are you working with in studio primarily more than what you're working with live? Like, are there modules that you don't even take out the house and that are only for uh, recording or sound design versus modules that you're using live? Yeah, I mean, I try to focus. I'm a minimalist. So I I focus on, I don't have a lot of, if, if you see my studio, there are not a lot of instruments sitting around dormant. Sure. I don't even have them in my site. So I loan them out to people. I, I put them in storage. Um, and I'm focusing really on the bukla. However, when I do, because I still do some recording projects and collaborations, and not everything is bukla, um, I do have other instruments. So I have, uh, uh, you know, I've worked with Moog, you mm -hmm. probably noticed. And, <laughs> I, you know, I have, they, they, this is a big surprise to me because in the old days, Moog and bukla were, you know, polarized. Right. You, you couldn't do both. And now, you know, it's, it's a whole different world. Uh, and I'm very impressed with some of the Moog designs. For instance, the Moog One, mm -hmm. uh, which I have, is a beautifully designed interface. It's not anything, you know, that I would take on the road to perform. Uh, so my specialty now is is the Bukla, but I do have other things. I have soft synths that I use sometimes that Eventide has designed and... Uh, so if I'm doing a recording project, I'll bring in other things. But for my live performance, I, I focus, I did bring in to my live performance uh, the, uh, the Moog app. I've seen, I've seen that on stage with you, uh, with the iPad, right? The Animoog is wonderful and it's perfect for touring because it's on an iPad. So, you know, I did integrate that. I also have um, my H9s. Your custom H9s. I, uh, the, those look pretty amazing. You got H9s like uh, seemingly like a modular skiff. Yes. See, this is another thing you can, uh, they were adapted by uh, Northern Lights in Denmark. Okay. They build it into a Buchla module. And the beauty of that was that they also added a control voltage for the you know the amount of the effect and this was something that i really really wanted because in the old days the buchla had a control voltage spring reverb so the sound could go close and far away close and far away and that was a wonderful dimensionality of the sound that i couldn't get i have these wonderful ipad controllers you know that are bluetoothed to the h9 and i can you know, design effects. Could you talk about your uh, direct experience with this idea of East Coast versus West Coast train of thought, all those forms of synthesis and how you are using whichever which today, or are you, it seems like you're using a combination of both. My history and studies involved a lot of things. I studied computer music with Max Matthews. 
uh, the father of computer music. So I went to Stanford Artificial Intelligence Lab, and we, you know, worked with John Chowning, and we designed sounds, and that became FM synthesis. So the DX7 came out years later, and that was a technology that I was very familiar with because I had I had done it at Stanford with these huge computers. And um, I always say, honestly, that it's not about the sound. It's about the way the sound moves. I think the focus on timbre, on, you know, focusing on a specific sound came when these machines were keyboard driven because that kind of relationship, you hit a key and you come up with a sound. For me, it was never that. It was the way the sound moves. There's no there there. It's in motion. It has energy. It's voltage controlled in with many more voltages than just a key voltage. It, it is alive for me. So I'm not focused on it. When I do sound design, yeah, I mean, there are many uses for these tools. And I might look for a specific sound. But in my performances, I'm more involved in the motion. Well, speaking of performances, what all are you performing with in, in addition to the iPads and the H9s that we talked about? Can we just kind of go through uh, your Buchla setup? Yeah, why not? I can show you the modules that I have here. So it's 18 panel unit system. It's very compact. So I have this one, two, three, four is the multiple arbitrary function generator. This is a clone that Roman Philpop made. Right. This is one of my, yeah, it's one of my most important performance tools. This is the 227. It's a spatial locator. Then this next row, I have kind of balanced uh, setup. I have uh, an envelope generator and a gate an envelope generator and a gate. So um, I double gate things. That's why even in a small system, I have two sets of these. In the middle, I have my filters. So I have a 267 filter, which includes uh, white noise and a random voltage generator. Mm -hmm. So it's very compact. And then two filters down below. This is a clone of my other filter, the 291. The 291E was the one I was talking about before that didn't have the negative input like this does. This is positive and negative, And it allows me to do so many things. Wow. You know, I couldn't make my ocean waves without a bandpass filter like this that allows me to plunge the control voltage negatively. My very compact sequencer. So this is four rows of sequencers. This is the program unit for the keyboard. Mm -hmm. So this goes with that keyboard that we looked at. So the two, the two oscillators. Now these two oscillators are dual oscillators, which just means that you know there's a main oscillator and a modulation oscillator. But because I want the system to be very compact, I actually use the modulation oscillator as a main oscillator. So I have four voices in two oscillators. This module is a routing system. So it has, it has audio at the top and control voltages at the bottom. This is a new design as well. This is by Doug Clowder. Then this is the final output stage. Let's see, can you see? I have a left and a right output. There is a memory down here. This is a little memory module that gives mm -hmm. me specific uh, locations for memory. I don't use a lot of memories. When you have a digital memory in an analog system, that memory, you know, your knob position doesn't reflect where the memory is. And so when you're performing, it can very, be very tricky. The beauty of analog is that it does give you feedback, direct feedback. You know what's going on, you know, you, you know where the space is, you know what's going on there because, because it tells you the thing about Google 
is that all these lights are talking to you. So, so this- I'll give you direct visual feedback. You can see what what's going what's on. Happening. This is one side of the art. The oh. So I can see everything that's going on and that's really important. For sure. Okay, let's get this down here. Okay, so this one is random. See how that's moving? Yeah. And every time it hits this, it does a wave shape modulation. So it makes a rhythm just with the sound of the timbre changing. Mm -hmm. And it's random, but it's in time then you might notice that the spatial movement is integrated with the rhythm because it's voltage control. This spatial rhythm is random. So now I'm going to hit stop over here on this keyboard. Start, stop transpose okay so um, over here we have this is a sequencer it's destined just for spatial modulation so spatial location is another whole conversation you i want to hear what you're playing and what system you're using and oh so well i'm i'm a little bit of a hodgepodge right now um i unfortunately have not been able to get into the bukla ecosphere yet but i have sort of experienced a lot of the modules that are inspired by bukla mainly from make noise i'm a huge make noise fan i sort of have um taken my performance rack I've uh, taken some cues from sort of the West Coast Bukla train of thought and taken some cues from some subtractive synthesis train of thought and sort of put them together. I mostly produce house and like low tempo hip hop, instrumental hip hop, and I'm a DJ. So what really got me in the modular is searching for, for my own sound. And I do that anyway as a DJ, just constantly searching for records. But when I realized that putting together my own synthesizer was really the only way that I was going to find sounds that I weren't hearing on other synthesizers. That's what kind of brought me into it. And then every now and again, I'm sort of programming my own uh, sequences and impregios, but for the most part, I'm kind of just patching and just letting random voltage sort of take me in a space that I didn't really think about going before. And that's been the, that's been a true fun because I've combined that, um, really just more rhythmic control than like harmonic control. But as long as um, I can maintain rhythm, then that allows me to add in my drum machines and uh, build the build music, build beats the way that I like to build them. I share with you the random voltage, you know, uh, appreciation. I think it's so powerful. And Buchla introduced me to that early on. You know, I thought random, what well, was random? That's out of control. It's like random. But then you realize that it's not out of control. It's very controlled random, right? How you use it. It's something nature is filled with randomness, whether it's uh, fractals and the way leaves are generated or, you know, that there's no exact repetition in nature, but there's a certain random variation on things that give us the beauty of uh, variety. If you looked at a tree and every every leaf was exactly the same, uh, it would just be a boring world. Uh, but there's this controlled randomness that operates in nature that gives specific outcomes and, it, you know, that's organic to the process and, and beautiful. And that's what we can do with electronic music, have the machine 
you know, do some of the thinking for us. Sort of rock my my world as as a creative, as a producer. And you can get all trippy, we can get all uh, spacey and whatnot, but it, it, it really is what we're dealing with. And it seems like that you're still doing that. Like even all these years later uh, and watching some of your footage from, from the Paris tour, that seems like that you're still experimenting with your patching. It's a choreography. When you're making changes live, you know, in the early days in that Buchla concerts, 1975, I would, I rehearsed, you know, for a month before that and half of it. And when the paper that I was telling you about has very specific instructions about how do you get from here to here? How do you, you you're in this scene and you're going to go to this scene. And how do you do that musically? You know, what I did 50 years ago and what I'm doing now, um, that there are a lot of common ingredients, even though the machines are different. Yeah. Uh, and that fascinates me that we do have, let's say, a practice that you say, and you, you know, I agree with you that the variables are enormous. Everybody's got a different machine, a different use of the same machine or a different, you know, there are all these variables. And, you know, I'm, I'm a real uh, spokesperson for Buchla. I know that a lot of people don't have them, but I think that the concepts, you know, can be translated to any other uh, designer and their, their tools. And so I'm trying to like, you know, show the Buchla, the Buchla thinking, because I think it's, it's brilliant thinking. It is the nature of electronic sound to want to move. It's the only naturally moving uh, generated sound. You know, it doesn't make sense for a flute to be jumping around or a guitar or anything. You know, we're used to having a static acoustic world. That's, Buchla was quadraphonic, the 200 from the beginning. See, I take that for granted because I, I grew up on quad, but the nature of electronics, because it's a monophonic signal, essentially, it comes to life when it moves. And it's the only instrument that allows the perfect integration of spatial movement with the sound. You know, if you're doing a quad mix of an acoustic album, you're going to be placing things. But the electronic can actually move those things it's an indigenous parameter of the sound. You have the frequency, the timbre, you know, the amplitude, and the spatial movement. Not just location, but movement, because it's integrated. So um, it hasn't been easy. You know, I, I am non-negotiable. When I do a concert, I have to have four speakers. When I first came back, that wasn't easy. People didn't want to do it. They'll try to talk you out of it. And you just say, no, quad, it has to be quad. Yeah, I want people to take a stand for quad, but you need, what's missing, I know for you, is that you don't have a spatial processor. I talk to a lot of young synthesists, or I, I don't like to use that word, but electronic music musicians, and uh, you know, they're, they're searching for the spatial control system. And I know there are some, I, I, I think Erica since made one, I think Poltergeist had made one, uh, whatever, but that's a tool that still needs to be uh, made available in a, in a larger way. Or you can make it yourself, you know, just get, you know, somebody with a soldering iron to give you a voltage controlled system. Well, Suzanne, this has been a very wonderful experience for myself, and I'm sure it's been an even better experience for everybody watching out there. And thank you all for watching. This has been another episode of Patchwork. I'm Fest Grandiose, signing off of Reverb. As always, stay safe, keep creating, and keep patching. Peace. Mm -hmm.